All right, you guys, we're coming to you live from the quail. Sorry, we're a couple minutes late. Um, what can we say about the quail? I, every year, this is my third year coming here. My second. And I, I keep thinking, like, well, maybe next year I won't come. And it's just amazing every time I set my water down. Um, so we've got to come back next year. You all should come next year, if you can, to the quail. Um, next year it is on May 16th. It's always on a Saturday afternoon. I think they open up at 9 or 10 ish. And uh, I think it goes till about 4 in the afternoon. Beautiful Monterey Peninsula. We're out here on the lawns with, I can't even tell you, the quality of the bikes that you'll see here. The rarest of the rare. Um, the past, the present. Too much into um, you know some of the featured bikes or we'll never be able to show you everything here and frankly we shouldn't you guys need to come here and see it for yourself but um, we just got off of two test rides two demo rides first was Ducati scramblers uh, and the second was Suzuki uh, because I ride a V-Strom, I started out on the DL1000, the new 2019. Uh, Rodney, you were on the Jixer 1000. 1000 R. 1000 R and switched at some point, so we both got a chance to ride those. On the Ducatis, I was on the Desert Sled and you had the 1100 S. What? S. Yeah. Uh, Ducati, smooth transmission torque and I don't gear didn't even matter it's like what gear am I in who cares right. just give it a throttle it had torque it went point and shoot point and shoot yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to talk about it and um, I will say for the desert sled they even took us into a gravel parking lot area for a while and I stood up on the pegs and the ergonomics for standing were just perfect right out of the box uh, could brake pedal gear shift pedal was awesome uh, so enough on the desert sled. Ducati Scrambler was impressive. Transmission. Ladies and gentlemen, we just like to let you know that the silent option will be closing in 30 minutes. Once again, the silent option will be closing in 30 minutes, and the silent option is located in the My Museum tent next to the merchandise tent. Once again, the silent option closing in 30 minutes, located at the My Museum tent. Okay, silent option. Closing in 30 minutes. What are you gonna bid on? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, what the we gotta go. So we wanted to start out here. We can't show you guys everything, but we do want to uh, share some stories about two of the bikes here that we've got history with. Uh, growing up in Fargo, North Dakota, Rodney and I were young teenagers. Those of you that follow my channel. Uh, will probably or maybe remember a video I did and we talked about your first bike was a Honda Elsinore. His mom wouldn't let him have a motorcycle and frankly neither would mine. Uh, so we just took things into our own hands. He bought that Elsinore completely in pieces in boxes. Assuming my, I would never get it back together. Yeah. Yeah, your mom. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that got put together and on the road. But uh, we'll finish up here with um, so a little bit about his first real street bike. And you'll have to forgive me. There's some comments coming in. And I'm sorry, I can't read them. First live, guys. It sucks getting old. It sucks getting old, yeah. I saw something pop up. Now, I don't know. Put it up again if, uh, if you want me to read that what was it let's see here welcome to the live chat yeah i know okay renee you're writing something i don't know thanks um let's tell this story about you were in milwaukee right. you're 15 years old i'm gonna let rodney tell the story and then we'll show you the bike that is in this story i used to walk home from school past the honda dealership every day and the world's fastest street bike was in the window. It's the VFR 1000R Honda. And I had to have it. So I decided I was gonna go home and put one of my dad's dress shirts on so I looked mature enough to ride the damn thing. And uh, they let me ride it. And there's one sitting next to us here. Let's take a look. Yeah. You want to read 
what it said on uh, Cycle Guide. It's the best street bike in the world. It's a pretty awesome machine. I mean, can you imagine what a 15 year old zip faced kid ride that? 15 year old? <laughs> they didn't even ask him if he had a license, which he didn't. Uh, for the record, he was licensed in North Dakota, but he had moved out to uh, Wisconsin and right. didn't carry the license over, so he knew how to ride it, but he probably shouldn't have. Yeah. But it's to the let's, history books. Let's show you this thing up close. This show of suspension. You gotta remember this was 1986. Yep. This is crazy. Back then, yeah, the cam gear drive V4 liquid cool. This thing was a monster. Okay, guys, forgive me. Let me see if I can read these comments here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Live chat, all messages are visible. Thanks, Renee. I got your message. Uh, no worries. Here. Ah, okay, here we go. Yes, nice to see you too. No worries about the uh, goodbye. Okay, um, what they're featuring this year at the Quail is uh, the hundredth anniversary of Braff and the Superior, and uh, and then fifty years of the Honda CB750. And let's walk over to these broths. They're mind blowing. Where did I leave my water? Somebody picked that up. Nineteen thirty-four. There are, I think, eleven or twelve I think here. It's a twelve. Twelve. A dozen bras. I mean, I don't know what that is in dollar value. A lot. Like millions of dollars here on display, and just in bras. There's one in particular I want to show you guys. It's a 1929. It's right here, it's getting all the attention, even from the judges. What I would love to be able to show you is the smell of this bike. It is, it smells like oil and grease. It, uh, very organic, awesome. This bike actually did the cannonball run like not so long ago recently maybe even this year I, I missed the announcement on it um, looks like it's a winner from the judges So that is all the broths. Amazing. Just really amazing. And now the CB750s. We'll head over here. Hey, it's an RE Suzuki. That is a rotary, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that rotary Suzuki. Wankel. Well, these are all the Wankels. Yeah, the Hercules. There's a Norton Wankel over here. I believe these were here last year. There's a cylinder head for you. Is there a Wankel hiding under there? No, I don't think so. Wow. Anyways, all right. We're heading over to see. 750s, where did they go? There's four sandcast CDs over here. Oh yeah, those sandcast. Let's look at those. 50 years of this Honda CB750. That's amazing. Uh, 
Well, there's only two left. Looks like people pulled out of here. But these are pristine examples. Motorcycle of the century. Motorcycle of the century. There was a larger display of them. I'm a little worried about the volume. Nice bimmer. Scotty Sharp collection. Did they pull all the CDs out of here? Yeah. I think they all left as a group. All right. Well, we missed them. The five fifty. We're going to go over here. We're going to go over and see Rodney's absolute first bike uh, that was not that Elsinore that he built out of a box. His first, first street really bike. Really. Yeah. Happens to be one here. I remember riding with him on my CX500, and he had what was sort of an old bike at the time, but now it doesn't seem so old. And for us to get Rodney and his story of this thing. There it is. Bought that one. 16, 15? 16-ish, yeah, yeah, not long after. I think I paid about $800 for it. Wow. And then six or seven years old. I remember you were riding it. Yeah. I can never get it to break 100 miles an hour. I re-geared it, re tweaked the carbs, all kinds of stuff to it. Never break 100 miles an hour. I remember a lot of backfiring. Yeah. Was it running lean, probably? probably? Hey, take the baffles out of the pipes. Let <laughs> you know, re -jet. That's what you get. You know, we learned, like everybody does, kind of one step at a time, one mistake at a time. Right? We did learn from all those mistakes. Look at what's sitting next to his childhood uh, bike here. Vincent. That bike is for sale, folks. So is this one, by the way, if you want to make an offer. I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to see? One of my childhood favorites here. The, oh, the AMF? Yep. Cafe Racer. One of the only Harley Davidsons I'd like to own. And they're actually kind of pieces of garbage, but it's yeah. pretty cool. It is cool. CR1000? Yeah. The AMFs, man, they were uh, known for leaking oil and not running. Right. Perfect for us. <laughs> Worth a lot of money, man. It's a 450 over here. That's a cool bike. Let's face it, they're all cool bikes. What else is fun to look at here that's, you know, beyond rare? We heard this uh, two stroke running earlier. It's a 750. It sounded like it was running great. The guy rode it from somewhere close by. Here's an old Indian. Old Scout. I love these single cylinder visas too. Oh yeah. They're obnoxious. Ultra cool. I, I'd love to hear that sound of that thing. You know, as part of the judging, they do fire these bikes up and you get to hear them running. Uh, we were busy with some rides with the uh, Suzuki. By the way, the Suzuki Jixer had this quick shifter. Both of us had never uh, ridden a bike with a quick shifter, and that was amazing. Yeah, let me give that two thumbs up. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. It was. You pull the clutch in, drop it into first gear, feather your clutch out to get going, and that's the end of using the clutch. Yeah. Everything after that is just lift that lever up. You don't even move the throttle. Just hold the throttle and move your toe, click it into whatever gear you want, up or down, no matter how fast you're going, no matter what the RPMs are,
bam. That thing makes you a good rider whether you want to be or not. Yeah. It's amazing. And uh, look at the bull tacos. Oh, it's some great bull tacos. Old KTM. That old KTM. I love the cylinder. I don't know. Yeah. But the key is Hashtag brap. <laughs> Hashtag brap is right. They got a fun little display of tacos over here I'll show you guys. Oh yeah, there's your Elsinore. That's a 250 though. Yeah. You had the 175. Yours was red too, right? That's because I painted it red. Oh, it got it. Cool. I just remembered red. Yeah, green's not cool. There's a couple of bull tacos. 250s. Somebody's gone through the trouble of polishing the side cover here. That is mirror-like finish. I like that left-hand shift, but the, the starter, that'd be fun. Yep. Probably kick it and then get on the bike. I think it's push it. Oh, there she is. Do you own these bikes? No. Uh, nice. <laughs> you can have them. Is that yours? You bet. I couldn't hear where she's at. <laughs> Man, I don't know what else to show you guys. Everything is worth stopping and showing. I mean, we were here how many hours? We didn't see it all. Oh, God, no. I mean, we were walking by BMW R90Ss, and just, they're not worthy of our time. Right. You you think something that would stop you dead in your tracks on the street, you know, at your local uh, watering hole where bikes gather, um, here you just walk right by it because there's something beyond that. Well, here's well, a, uh, I mean, the Brofs. Uh, CBX over here. Let's look at the CBX. Turn you around here, guys. The, uh, pipe past the pipes. I've never These are my favorite CBXs. I don't like the fairings. Yeah. Keep it naked. I'm with you. Naked's, naked's cool. I'd like to sink the carbs on that. And I, those same carbs are on the CB900 that I restored, and I did not like working on four of them. I cannot imagine working on six. There is an 1154. Yeah. Wow. What year is that? That's a new one. Oh, yeah. Right. There's a uh, 550. Yeah. I can't even keep up with the companies with the bringing out. 550. Yeah. This is the bike I wanted but couldn't find. Oh, yeah. Super sport. Right. I had the 4K. Are those Lester mags? They look like it. They look like Lester's, which were an aftermarket, but I know Lester's sold mags directly to some of the manufacturers at the time. I don't know if it would have been offered with them. Or if that would have been something the owner put on afterwards. But if you guys don't know what a Lester mag is, you'd see them on Goldwings and Hondas of the era a lot. And really any UJM. Yeah, Beamers had them too. Uh, that's right. Beamers had Lester's. I love on this four into one. It's beautiful. And that's stock, right? Yeah, that's stock. It's sure, man, that is amazing. <laughs> My dad buzzing me on the phone saying, "Are you at the show yet?" Yes, Dad. I'm at the show. Huh. Maybe what I'll do is hike you guys up high and do a spin here. We can do that. Bear with me. All right. Enjoy the ride.
Let's talk a little bit about vendors that are here. Last, I don't know, two years ago, Mert Walwell, uh, who makes an appearance in On Any Sunday, uh, that classic motorcycle film from the 60s, or was it 70s? Early 70s. Right there at the turn of that decade. Um, he was here, uh, he actually still builds like flat tracker bikes, and he was signing autographs. This year they had a private dinner and book signing. Um, Peter Egan. Peter Egan, thank you very much. Totally drawn. Blank. I think we saw him roll in on his green beamer too. Pretty sure we did, but he he looked different than in the magazines. Um, I, I think they're using like an older drawing. In somebody him. said that he did shave his beard off. So. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, Peter Egan. Uh, who was the other guy that was here? Uh, legend. Arlen Ness was here last year. Arlen Ness was here last year, and he uh, passed away. And then Burt Monroe's bike was here last year. Burt Monroe's actual land speed record holding bike was here. Someone had restored it. It was an Englishman. And we got to hear it run. My ears are still ringing from that. Yeah. God, that was loud. Yeah. But it was so cool. Only at the Quail will you experience something like that. Uh, there are motorcycle shows, and then there's the Quail. Uh, I have not been to the Barber. I know that that is a hell of a show, people say. You know, maybe we got to check it out sometime. But here on the West Coast, it's all about the Quail. Yeah, the other vendors are uh, you have Arch Motorcycles. Arch, yeah. Open Seeds. Joey. Yeah. Uh, Harley Davidson's got their live wire. Yeah. yeah, they're giving like test rides on a dyno uh, on the live wire. Yeah, what a big screen in front. I don't know what the figure. It's like a thirty thousand dollar bike, and we can afford it. <laughs> You'll never buy one for the price, so you might as well ride it here. Right. Kind of ride it. I don't know what their logic is. Sorry, Harley, we're not impressed with the price point. The bike looks cool. Yeah. And and thumbs up for doing electric, but Energica's yeah. here. But they're electrics. They're awesome. Yeah. 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 Last year we rode zeros. Let's say we had nobody watching. So we did right up until a moment ago. Well, then for you that watch this as a video later. Uh, provided YouTube allows us to stay up with all of that copywritten music in the background. Uh, thank you for watching. If you guys like uh, what I'm doing here on this channel, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to become a monk like Rodney and I. And uh, we really appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. Take care.